Uh, so, for example, a study was done in Africa. They asked uh, men, what are trees good for? And the men could name six or seven things. They asked the women in the same village, what are trees good, good for? And they had about 33 things that trees were good for. Because, and different kinds of trees. They needed the biodiversity of trees. Because some trees are good for, uh, for swings, and some are good for, for making brooms, and some are good for this kind of nut, and that kind of nut, and this kind of berry, and that kind of fruit. But of course, the men didn't cook, so they didn't know. Some trees are good for firewood. It's the women who collect. Women collect firewood there. So uh, the idea is that if you really cared about nature for itself, you would help all of those women who are half of humanity. So it would be a win-win situation. Human beings would be better off. Well, this uh, has this relates to animals as well, in my view. If we care about morally care about animals for themselves, we will have, in general, better lives. Aiming directly at human welfare through the exploitation of unlimited exploitation of animals. It's the unlimited part that I want to stress. Tends to make life worse for people. Immanuel Kant maintained that only people count morally. In this sense, Carl Cohen is a Kantian in his thinking. But he said, we should be kind to animals. And one example he gave is that if a dog has served you well uh, during its lifetime and now is so old that the dog has become a burden and you kill that dog, then uh, that's wrong. Um, people who are hard in their relationship with animals will tend to be hard in their relationship with people. And he said that in certain areas, uh, that's why butchers are not allowed to vote. Well, as a human generalization, that seems suspect to me. Of course, he didn't have the tools of s social research at his disposal. And my guess is that, that butchers are probably as fine people as anyone else, and that and who knows, it may be at the individual level that people who, who come home and kick the dog are less likely to kick their child. And maybe it helps people. Who, who knows? But what I'm saying is at the level of civilization, a civilization that cares about animals for itself will tend to be care about people, a wider range of people for themselves. They won't be trying to do genetic experiments on animals that then can be applied to create such jeopardy to people. They won't be trying to get extra milk out of cows through human bo uh, bovine growth hormone, through the bovine growth hormone. Well, I want to, um, to conclude with some notions of where what to do with these ideas. This perspective does not give us, that I can tell, any hard and fast rules about what to do. People, uh, you know, Kant had perfect duties. You knew what to do, never lie. Very clear what to do. But he also had imperfect duties, such as the duty to be charitable, which did not specify exactly to whom or how much or when. That was left to a matter of judgment. There could be some very clear cases and some very unclear cases, cases of difficult judgment, cases of easy judgment. That's my view about the human treatment of animals. We should be imposing less on animals because we should care about the animals for themselves. 
does that mean that uh, you shouldn't jeopardize the lives of mice if they take uh, residence in your house? No, actually, it's pretty tough to live with mice. You really do have to do something about the mice, um, I think. It's nice if you can trap them and escort them to the local park. This is best. But that might not be practical. They're kind of smart about those things. It's difficult to... And so that would be a real conflict between people and animals. That can exist. So I'm not saying there's a hard and fast rule, never do anything that harms any animal. I think that's impractical. And that's why the strong rights approach, especially rats if they're in your house, very bad. But the rats are subjects of a life in Tom Reagan's sense. Still, you can't live with them. So, so the, the rights in the strong, narrow sense, I, I don't find helpful to resolving conflicts. But the notion that, in general, as a civilization, we should care about non-human nature, including non-human animals, more, and back away from having more power over nature, suggests that from where, where we are now, we can actually have a win-win situation. This is not the way our civilization is going. It is a suggestion about a radical change. Uh, as for personal life, however, does this mean that everyone should be uh, a vegan? Tom Reagan is a vegan. I don't know whether he mentioned did he mention that that, he, that he's a vegan. I didn't know he was a vegan. I, so I had dinner with him a few years ago. I had dinner with him before. Maybe he wasn't always a vegan, but by a few years ago he he was. Uh, or just a vegetarian. Or eat some meat, but not often. It's my view that people can make contributions to good causes that they take seriously as important in themselves. They'll have personal fulfillment as a byproduct. There are so many different issues that people can be concerned with and so many different degrees of action and attention to those issues that it's hard to judge someone else. That person who seems to be ignoring global warming by having this large vehicle and driving it often may be very conscientious about third world development and animal rights. We're complex people. We can't do everything. So, it, so to me, it's hard to judge others. I am not a vegan. I am a vegetarian. That is a compromise. And even with, and it's hard to even be a perfect vegetarian. Well, that cheese has some renin from animals. It's, it's very, trying to be perfect could drive you crazy. And driven crazy, how much good are you going to be to the world? Probably not that much. So I have the notion, what I call the principle of, part of anticipatory cooperation. If you live, take any issue that you might be concerned with, animals, eating animals that have been raised in horrible conditions on factory farms, you should, if you are concerned about animals, eat less of that than is normal in your society. This will mean that there will be times when your menu at the restaurant is more limited. As your society develops, if it develops, to eat less meat from factory farms, then you could perhaps become a vegetarian because that will become easier for you to do without making your life